What's up everybody, Landon with LMR.com and welcome to my detailed overview on 50 Resto's four lug rear disc brake conversion kits fitting the 1979 to 1993 Fox Mustangs. If you're in the market to ditch the factory rear drum brakes, improve braking performance, and retain your loyalty to a four lug setup, then a four lug rear disc brake conversion from 50 Resto is for you. There are three separate kits for three separate applications, 1979 to 1986 cars, 87 to 92 cars, and finally, 1993 cars. The majority of the components are the same throughout all the kits. A few differences are master cylinders, parking brake cables, and axle hard lines. 1979 to 1986 Foxes will include an SVO master cylinder and no axle hard lines. So if you are converting a 79 to 86 car, you will need to purchase or borrow a line flaring tool. This tool is needed to cut and properly flare the factory axle hard lines so that the included line fittings screw directly into the supplied brake hoses. Other than that modification, this kit is completely turnkey and includes all the needed components to convert your 1979 to 1986 Fox to four lug rear disc. 1987 to 1993 Fox bodies are the exact same, except for one small thing, parking brake cables. Without getting into the specifics, 87 to 92 owners will need an 87 to 92 specific kit. Likewise, with 93 owners, you'll need a 93 specific kit to work with your car. Each kit will include a 1993 Cobra master cylinder and the needed three port to two port master cylinder to factory hardline adapter. Now, 1987 to 1993 owners are in luck. Both of these kits include our SVE axle hard lines, which are a direct bolt-in. This means you don't have to cut and flare your factory hard lines. These SVE lines feature similar bends, so minimal bending is required whenever you do get them installed. They also feature the correct line fittings, so they bolt directly to the included brake hoses and the factory center upper axle hose. Like the 79 to 86 kit, both the 87 to 92 and 1993 kits are turnkey as well. Each of these kits are going to include everything you need to make this four lug rear disc swap possible. Master cylinder, driver's side and passenger side calipers, caliper brackets, pads, rotors, hoses, proportioning valve, proportioning valve plug, parking brake cables, brake dust shields, and of course, all the needed attaching hardware. All right guys, follow along as I walk you through my process on converting this 92 coupe to four lug rear disc. To begin installation, support the car via a lift or jack stands. Remove both rear wheels. Remove the sway bar if equipped. Position a drain pan or bucket underneath the center section. Loosen and remove all of the bolts except for the top one. This will keep the cover in place while you pry it open to drain the fluid. Now we'll go ahead and pry the cover free with a flathead or a pry bar. Allow the majority of the fluid to run out of the rear end and then remove the last bolt. Set the differential cover aside for now. Go ahead and scrape away any old RTV from the rear end to div cover mating surface. Spray quality brake clean into the rear end to thoroughly clean the carrier and the surrounding components. Rotate the carrier so that the cross pin bolt is accessible. Loosen the cross pin bolt and then slide the cross pin out of the carrier. Now you can remove the drums from each side of the axles. If the drum is stuck, lightly tap it with a hammer to free it from the backing plate. Push in an axle and then remove a C-clip. Use a rag to catch any fluid that may run out when you remove the axle from the housing. Do the same for the other axle. Mark the drive shaft with a paint pin and then remove the four drive shaft to flange bolts with a 12.12 millimeter socket. Remove the drive shaft from the car and then plug the tail shaft on the transmission. Removing the drive shaft will allow clearance to remove the parking brake cables. To do this, remove the loop brackets securing the parking brake cables to the lower torque box. Remove the cable eyelets from the front parking brake cable. Pass the cable through the guides and then depress the clips on the cable retainer with a box end wrench. Now use a combination of a deep socket and box end wrench, securing the brake backing plate to the housing. Use a line wrench to remove the brake hard line from the back of the backing plate. Remove the backing plate and then cap the hard line. For the next step, Removal of the lower shock hardware will help with additional clearance when fastening the brake line bracket. Position the bracket over the shock mount on the axle housing. Mark the bolt hole with a permanent marker. Mark the area for the alignment tab or just simply cut the tab off with a cutoff wheel. Once you have made the needed marks, remove the bracket, spray some WD-40 over the marked areas for lubrication, and begin drilling each hole with a quarter inch drill bit. You may have to enlarge either of the holes to 5 16 to get the tab or bolt hole aligned with the brake soft line bracket. 
Once the holes are drilled, clean the area with brake clean and then debar the holes. Secure the brake hose bracket to the shock bracket with the supplied bolt. Repeat those steps for the other side. This kit includes the needed axle lines so you don't have to cut and flare the factory lines. I made life easy and removed the center upper axle hose for the next steps. Remove the banjo bolt securing the hose to the upper hard line. Remove the nut securing the upper axle hose bracket to the rear end housing. Now remove the upper axle hose and axle line assembly from the car. Inspect the upper axle hose and replace if worn. Install the supplied SVE axle hard lines into the crossover block on the upper axle hose. The longer of the two lines will be for the passenger side. The purple fittings will screw into the upper axle hose block and the red fittings will screw into the soft line you installed previously. Tie the nut securing the upper axle hose bracket to the rear end housing. Use two new crush washers to secure the upper axle hose to the upper hard line. Next, reuse your previously removed hardware that secured the brake drum backing plate to the housing. Slide the bolts through the housing with the threads on the outside. Position the supplied caliper brackets over the bolts. They are marked R for passenger side and L for driver side. Tighten down the nuts using the same combination as before. Next, install the dust shields with the supplied hardware. These are not side specific, but should be positioned so that the caliper bolt holes on the caliper bracket are not covered. Tighten down the hardware. Do the same for the other side. Carefully slide the axles into the housing. One at a time, push an axle in, install the C-clip, and pull out to lock it into place. Do the same for the other axle. Reinstall the cross pin and retighten the cross pin bolt. Reinstall the lower shock hardware. Clean the front and back sides of the included rotors and slide them over the studs. Use a lug nut to hold them in place while you install the calipers. Position the caliper bracket over the rotor and use the supplied hardware to tighten it down. One washer will be positioned under the head of the bolt and the other between the caliper bracket and axle housing bracket. This will help shim the bracket so that the rotor sits even in between the caliper bracket. Place the supplied rattle clips onto the caliper bracket. Be sure to apply a thin film of grease to the pad contact areas. Install the pads. Apply a thin film of grease onto any pad contact point on the brake caliper. Position the caliper over the pads and tighten down the hardware. Slide a crush washer over the banjo bolt. Slide the banjo bolt through the brake hose block. Place another crush washer over the bolt and then thread the bolt by hand into the caliper. Tighten down the banjo bolt and be sure you properly crush the crush washers. Do the same for the other side. Find the end of the included parking brake cable that has the small groove in. This end will slide through the caliper and lock in place with the provided E-clip. Route the new cable in the same direction as the old cable. Pass it through the opening underneath the car and push the end of the cable toward the center of the car until the clips lock into place. Route the cable through the guides and then hook the other eyelet into the front parking brake cable. Do the same for the other side. Reinstall the cable to chassis retaining hooks. Reinstall the drive shaft and tighten the bolts. Now, carefully bend the new hard lines so that they sit parallel with the axle tubes. Also, you will have to carefully bend the lines so that the red fittings sit flush and even with the soft lines. Once all bends are completed, tighten down all the fittings with the appropriate line wrenches. Double check all of your bends and make sure the lines do not come in contact with the upper control arms or rear end housing. Before reinstalling the diff cover, make sure the mating surface is completely clean and no signs of old sealer or silicone is present. Clean your cover and reinstall it. Be sure to either use the lube locker gasket we carry at LMR.com or apply fresh RTV. Torque the bolts to 20 to 25 pound feet, working in a star pattern and starting with the bottom bolt. Now unscrew the fill plug with a 3 8 extension. Fill the differential with two quarts of fresh gear oil and friction modifier. Retighten the fill plug and reinstall the sway bar. This will complete the rear portion of the install. Moving to the engine bay, disconnect the low fluid level sensor on the master cylinder. Position it out of the way and then remove the two nuts securing the master cylinder to the brake booster. Before continuing to the next steps, place several old rags underneath the factory proportioning valve to catch any fluid that runs out. Remove all three hard lines from the master cylinder. Two on the side and one on the bottom. Remove the master cylinder from the car. Wipe up any brake fluid that may have come in contact with painted surfaces. If you do not remove this within a timely manner, it will eat through the paint. Remove the two hard lines from the factory proportioning valve. Now use an opened end wrench to support the proportioning valve while you loosen the three three quarters inch hex head plug. 
Remove the plug and then gut the factory proportioning valve. Transfer the O-ring on the factory plug to the supplied proportioning valve plug. Thread the included plug into the proportioning valve and then tighten it down. Install the supplied master cylinder over the studs on the brake booster and tighten down the previously removed nuts. Remove the port plugs and thread the supplied line adapters into the primary cylinder on the master cylinder. This is the port closest to the firewall. Thread the bottom factory line into the T-fitting. Use the other supplied line and install it into the top port on the T-fitting and the back port on the factory proportioning valve. Transfer the factory hard line that was threaded into the front port on the factory master cylinder. Thread this line into the first port on the factory proportioning valve. Tighten this fitting. Now carefully bend the line so that the upper fitting sits flush with the port on the new master cylinder. Thread and tighten down the fitting. Reconnect the low fluid sensor. Now locate the union fitting on the passenger side. Loosen and remove the two hard lines from the union and discard it. The port marked in will go to the line coming from the firewall. The port marked out will go to the line leading to the rear of the car. Thread the supplied line adapters into the in and out ports on the included proportioning valve. Tighten down the fittings. Thread the knob all the way in or clockwise to allow full pressure of the brake system. Once the brakes are bled, a setting in between fully tight and fully open will yield a proportionally adjusted line pressure. Now it's time to bleed the brakes. Open the master cylinder cap and fill the reservoir with appropriate brake fluid. Fill until the fluid reaches the max line on the reservoir. Close the cap and remove the front wheels. Grab a bucket or bottle and a quarter inch inner diameter clear hose. Position the hose over the bleeder, starting on the passenger rear caliper. Have someone inside of the car pump the brakes two or three times and hold. Open the bleeder with a line wrench and then close it. Repeat this until fluid starts to flow. Move to the driver's side rear and repeat the steps. Then to the passenger front and finally to the driver's side front caliper. While doing this, make sure the master cylinder reservoir stays topped off and doesn't run empty. Since I installed new axle hard lines, a new master cylinder and rear calipers, I would repeat the process one more time to ensure all the air is out of the system especially since we did not bench bleed the master cylinder. Once complete, the pedal should be very firm. Don't forget to set the proportioning valve in between fully closed and fully open. Double check your work and then take a light test drive. Finally, enjoy the increased stopping power from 5 Restos for lug rear disc setup. Installation time will vary depending on the skill level of the individual. I personally would allot yourself an afternoon with a friend to help lend a hand. Other than the 79 to 86 owners having to cut and flare your factory hard lines, these kits are direct bolt-in. Keep a few things in mind before you install this kit. You will obviously need fresh gear oil and brake fluid, but consider replacing the center upper axle hose as they are oftentimes worn and deteriorated, as well as new axle bearings and seals while you had the axles removed from the house. All of those components can be purchased on our site, lmr.com. If you're in the market for a quality, Rear disc setup, pick up one of these 5 Resto rear four lug kits. Until next time, subscribe to our YouTube channel for, for content covering 1979 to 1993 Mustangs. And until next time, keep it right here with the real Fox Body enthusiasts, Late Model Restoration.